Coming up in our next installment of America's Hope, if you live in the state of New York, beware, you could be placed under quarantine for a public health violation. And as we move forward into the new year, what are you doing to improve your brand? How are you going to live your best life now? We'll talk to brand expert Yolanda M. Smith next on America's Hope. Good evening, I'm Kelly Wright, and this is America's Hope, and thank you for joining us this hour. We're glad that you can join us. By the way, Happy New Year to each and every one of you. As we unfold and unpack tonight's program, we're going to focus on two issues. One is happening here in New York. The state of New York's public health department has the right to put you under quarantine if they feel that you are a serious threat to the public health of the community at large. We're going to talk about that with attorney Bobby Cox. And then, because it is the start of a new year, we're also going to be speaking to you tonight about how you can improve your personal brand to succeed and fulfill your dreams. We have the wonderful, internationally known Yolanda M. Smith joining us tonight, who will help you with your brand. She's known as the Branthropist, all that and more happening right now on America's Hope. Let's get started. Tonight we're going to talk about an issue that's going on. It's unfolding in the state of New York. It's reminiscent of what happened during COVID when there were mass lockdowns and quarantine that took place in the city as well as throughout the entire state. This past November, just a few days before Thanksgiving, an appellate court made a ruling to reinstate regulations that forced residents to isolate themselves during an outbreak of any contagious disease that poses a health risk to the general population. Now with this decision, the New York governor gets her way in terms of moving the state forward to impose a quarantine should someone feel the need to do that. Republicans meantime say this is a calamitous decision that is equivalent to government overreach. Joining us now to discuss this is attorney Bobby Cox and attorney Bobby Cox is good of you to join us this hour. What is your chief concern about this uh, updated ruling, if you will, that poses so much of a threat to the privacy of citizens living here in the state of New York? Yes, well, you know, the problem here is that this regulation that the governor and her Department of Health issued, um, which was struck down last year by a trial court judge here in New York State, it was found unconstitutional, uh, but the governor and the attorney general appealed, and as you said, an appellate court uh, just overturned that decision from mm -hmm. last year and threw out our case on the basis of standing. Um, so now this means that the governor and her Department of Health are free to reissue this regulation, um, which has zero due process protections built into it and basically allows the Department of Health to pick and choose which New Yorkers they can lock up or lock down. They don't have to prove you're sick. They don't have to prove you were exposed to a communicable disease. They can lock you up or lock you down in your home, or they can remove you from your home with the force of police and put you into a detention facility of their choosing. Uh, once you're in there, there's no process for you to get out. Uh, the, the regulation says absolutely nothing about how you get out of quarantine once you're put in there. Um, and, you know, there's absolutely no age restrictions either. So they can do this to you, but they can also do this to your child or your grandchild or your elderly parent. Um, it, it's a totalitarian regulation. There's no due process in here. It doesn't even say that you have the right to an attorney until after you're locked up or after you're locked down. Um, and it conflicts with our existing New York state law. We already have a quarantine law, which we've had since 1953. And that law is full of due process protections. So this ruling now allows the Department of Health the ability to reissue this regulation, uh, which is, is terrible. It conflicts with our constitution. It conflicts with our existing quarantine law for 70 years that we've had in New York. 
And it really gives a power to the Department of Health that, that they are not entitled to have. What caused this? What caused the, the state and the governor to reach out to do this? Uh, because uh, you have fought this case before and you saved millions of New Yorkers suffering from uh, the probable effects of illegal forced quarantines uh, by what many people have called the state government tyrannical. Yes, absolutely. You know, this the original court struck this down in July of 2022. Um, and then we saw Governor Hochul and uh, Attorney General Letitia James come back uh, after the 2022 elections, uh, when they both won re-election. Um, and in 2023, they filed an appeal to get that decision overturned. So they knew exactly what they were doing. They wanted this power back and they fought for it in the appellate court. Now, the court, as you mentioned, issued their ruling just before Thanksgiving. Um, they did not rule on the merits of the case. They did not say that the regulation was constitutional. What they did was they said that they were going to throw the case out because they didn't feel that my plaintiffs had standing. They didn't feel that they had the right to sue and bring this lawsuit in the first place, um, which is very wrong. My plaintiffs absolutely have standing. I'm representing a group of New York state legislators, Senator George Borrello, Assemblyman Chris Teague, Congressman Mike Lawler, and a citizens group called Uniting New York State. They have standing absolutely without question. In fact, the lower court judge didn't even address standing. He wrote a 14 page decision, very well written, very thought out when he struck down this regulation a year and a half ago. And he didn't even mention at all the standing issue because he didn't feel it was even an issue. It's not. Uh, clearly the executive branch of government has overstepped and the legislative branch has the right to go to court and sue the executive branch when they feel that the executive branch has taken a power that is reserved for the legislature. So we, we do feel it's, it's an incorrect decision and we are planning to appeal this case to the highest court in New York State. Bobby, I'd like you to stay with me. I'm gonna take a break and when we come back, I wanna to talk to you more about what this case or what this ruling does to the people living in New York City. You mentioned it uh, just a moment ago but I want to drill down deeper in terms of how this affects people and their rights. We're coming back with Bobby Cox in just a moment. Welcome back to America's Hope. I'm talking to attorney Bobby Cox, and she is quite concerned, as well as many Republicans throughout the state, and even those who are concerned about their personal uh, rights being violated by a new court ruling uh, in the state of New York that now gives the governor and the attorney general and the state the right to quarantine people if they should suspect that someone has uh, a, a communicable disease or that could pose a, a threat to public health. Now, I mentioned communicable disease, but it could be a disease like COVID. It could be any of those things that we saw in the past. And we all remember what Governor Cuomo, the former governor of New York, uh, put so many people through with, with very um, austere measures in terms of the lockdown and the quarantines. What are your concerns about the average person living here in New York and what does this new ruling mean? Well, so, you know, you brought up a good point here. This rule that was originally struck down last year, and now the appellate court has overturned that decision uh, and dismissed our case on standing grounds, that rule, it's called Rule 2.13, the name was Isolation and Quarantine Procedures. Uh, it was not just COVID specific. It actually is about a whole laundry list of diseases that the Department of Health has on a list. And they can change that list that list at will. Uh, there, there needs to be no legislative oversight. And the, some of the things on that list I wanna share with your audience because it's a little bit astonishing. Yes, of course, COVID is on there and tuberculosis and other communicable diseases that are dangerous. However, there are also things on that list, like for example, toxic shock syndrome. 
uh, like, for example, Lyme disease, uh, like, for example, botulism, which is food poisoning. You know, so those are also diseases that are listed on this list. And so now we're seeing that the appellate court has paved the way for the Department of Health and the governor to reissue that regulation if they want to. And so now you're going to be able to isolate or quarantine people indefinitely in their home or in a facility of the government's choosing because they have botulism or because they have, uh, you know, uh, Lyme disease. I, I mean, it just it just doesn't make sense. It, it's horrendously unconstitutional. And like I said, it breaches not just the separation of powers doctrine, because the governor doesn't have the power to make a rule like this. But it also says now this this holding says that, hey, New York state legislators, you don't have the right to go into court and sue if you think that an agency has breached their powers and taken some of yours. It's it's really, it's a dangerous decision. Yeah, and so Bobby, what, what happens then, if, if I'm hearing you correctly, if I live in New York City or Westchester County, where you reside or any of the counties throughout the state of New York, even rural areas, if someone suspects me of having some sort of illness that could impact them, you're, you mean to tell me they can turn me into the state and the state can then shut me down and isolate me from my family and from my community and even from gaining uh, uh, employment that would help me with my finances and taking care of my household? Yeah, absolutely. This regulation, if they reinstate this regulation, Rule 2.13, you know, that's exactly the power that will be bestowed upon the, the Department of Health uh, they literally can choose who they want to isolate or quarantine, and they don't have to prove you're sick. They, they don't have to prove you've been exposed to a communicable disease. It just says, the language in the regulation just says, well, whenever they deem appropriate. You know, it doesn't even need to be a state of emergency. Oh, oh, but that's, so that's, what's so, that's what's so surprising about this ruling, because on the face of it, you want to throw it out because it's a violation of my civil rights based on maybe innuendo by someone who has no proof or validation. And then you're also saying that if I, if I am uh, pointed out by someone and I'm placed in isolation and quarantine, there's nothing I can do about it? Right, so the regulation has no process by which you can regain your freedom. And what I mean by that is when we were in front of the trial court last year and we were having oral arguments back in May of 2022, the trial court judge asked the attorney general's office, he said, let's say you take a family, let's say you put them into quarantine somewhere in, in, in a facility or a hospital, let's say. Once they are in there, how do they get out? And the attorney general's office, you know, they thought about it for about a minute. And then they said, well, I guess that they could hire an attorney and they could sue us. You know, so that is the antithesis of due process, right? You are not supposed to be able, you meaning the government, are not right. supposed to be able to lock citizens up in their homes or take them from their homes and put them into a facility and then they don't have a way to get out unless they hire Are you a lawyer. Are kidding me? You? No, no, it's crazy. Bobby, I'm just curious, what, what case uh, or cases in the past did the attorney general and the governor cite as being a reason for implementing this kind of ruling? Well, so the ruling from the judges, um, you know, is different than the reasoning of the governor and the Department of Health for this regulation. You know, if you read through the papers um, that have been submitted by the attorney general in this case, whether it was last year at the trial court or this year on on appeal, um, you know, their idea is, well, you know, we need this regulation. We need this power because, you know, just in case. We have to be able to control all of New Yorkers, you know, all New Yorkers. We need to centralize the power and give that power to the government at the state level, right? But that is not what our quarantine law says. We've had a quarantine law since 1953. It's full of due process protections. The number one thing that that law says is first, 
you have to actually have the disease that they think that you have. Yeah. Then you can go to step number two, which is if a health department, local health department, not state health department, if the local health department has been referred this case by a doctor, then they can do an investigation and see if the person is actually infected. And if that person is not just infected, but if they also are comporting themselves in a manner that is not safeguarding those around them. And then they feel that that's the case, then they go to a court, right? And then there's a hearing in front of a judge, an impartial third party judge who gets to hear the evidence. You have the right to an attorney, you have a hearing, you can cross-examine witnesses, you know, the whole thing. And then at the end of that, if the judge thinks that not only the person has that communicable disease, but also they're not able to comport themselves in a proper manner to safeguard those around them, then they can issue an isolation or a quarantine order, but that only puts them to a hospital where they can receive care and treatments so that they can get better and then get released and rejoin society. They're not allowed to, a judge is not allowed to just, you know, issue an isolation or a quarantine yeah. order and put you wherever they want, anywhere they want. You know, the language in the regulation that the governor and the Department of Health have fought so hard for says that they can put you into any temporary housing that they want. I mean, what are we talking about here? This this is craziness. Yeah, there's well, absolutely it, no due process protection. Uh, so I, I I've got to ask you: Does this smack of uh, not only government overstep and overreach, but does it sound kind of like a little bit of communism? Well, it's certainly if you read this regulation, and I encourage people to do so. You can read it. Uh, it's posted on my website, uh, which is coxlawyers.com. Um, it's also posted on one of my plaintiff's websites. It's unitingnys.com. Just go to the lawsuit tab and you can actually click on, read the judge's decision from the lower court and you can read in that decision at the end is the actual regulation itself. You know, it's some scary language there. It, it is really totalitarian it gives absolute power to unelected bureaucrats in the department of health so you're not supposed to give a power like that to unelected officials that's why our elected officials in our legislature that's who makes our laws because here in new york if you don't like the laws that are being passed every two years you have the opportunity to vote exactly. those people out vote new people in but you can't do that with the department of health so bobby is this a, a republican thing a democrat thing or is it one of those things where where people have just failed to do the right thing for the american people living in the state of new york so um this is neither a democrat nor a republican thing this really is a constitutional issue the people of new york need to understand that their constitutional rights are being violated by a regulation like this and they need to speak up about it you know it, i am representing of new york state legislators who happen to be members of the republican party but you know what I, i'm not republican in fact i'm a democrat right so it doesn't matter what your political affiliation is this is about the constitution this is about our rights this is about making sure the separation of powers is preserved. I'm wondering how many citizens in New York know and how many people across America know enough to watch this to arm themselves with the knowledge to defend their civil rights. Yeah, so people can get involved. Um, if people want to do something, they can go to a unitingnys.com, um, click on the lawsuit tab, and there are things you can do to get involved. Um, people can certainly donate to the cause um, if they are so inclined. I, I am handling this case pro bono. Um, we do have a donate button there on the website or on coxlawyers.com. People can also speak up about this. You know, if you live in New York, uh, hey, make your voice heard. Why don't you reach out to the, the governor's office or reach out to the attorney general's office 
or reach out to your elected officials, your state senator, your state assembly member, let them know that you do not want this regulation reissued. You are not in favor of this lawsuit being overturned. You know, people can speak up, make phone calls, send emails, just get involved in any way you can because it's so important that people take charge. I need to ask you, you know, this show's about hope. We, we look at the negative things and we also try to find <laughs> that, uh, that one fundamental thing that we hold on to and that's hope in, in God in our country. Uh, based on what you've just been fighting and battling, do you still have hope for America and what is it? I do, I absolutely do. You know, <clears throat> I have get, done a lot of public speaking about this regulation, about this lawsuit, and I have met so many people across New York State because of this. I have to say, the will of the people is really strong. People have hope. People really do love our country. They love our society. I think what we just need to do is help each other understand what our rights are. New York civil rights attorney, I appreciate you for joining us today and sharing some uh, important insights about a very important case that's unfolding here in New York and how it might impact so many citizens here. Uh, but most notably, thank you for sharing your insights, your information, your fight for the good fight, and then your hope for America. Thank you, Bobby. Yes, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Keep us updated. We'll be back with more in just a moment. Welcome to America's Hope. It's the start of a new year, and we're glad that you could join us here as we start delivering another year of lifting you up with hope. And we thought, what better way to do that than to introduce you to, to Yolanda M. Smith. Why? Because she embodies purpose-driven success with a mission to empower others to achieve their optimal best. And she's known for her personal branding expertise and business strategy. Yolanda founded Branding for Success. It's an LLC where she serves as the CEO and chief brandthropist, certified both as a brand analyst and diversity equity and inclusion communicator. Yolanda, it's such a pleasure to have you on. You are an international speaker and coach empowering people throughout the world. So thank you for joining us this hour on America's Hope. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure, thank you. Yeah, and I should say to you, Happy New Year. How are you getting things started off this new year and helping people develop their best brands now? Oh my goodness, I tell you what, I am just so excited for 2024. My motto is, is that we will soar in 2024. And so really excited to help individuals really unlock their potential, right? By elevating their voice, their brand, by really helping others know the value that they can deliver to them. And they do that through story and connection. So it's, it's going to be a mighty year. It's going to be powerful. Well, it also sounds like if it's going to be a mighty year and a powerful year and you soar in 24, it sounds like there's some hard work and heavy lifting involved as well. Hey, you already know that, you know, the hustle is real. And in order to get results, we've got to put the work in. And it starts with the level of commitment, right? You've got to be committed and you've got to be willing to muster up that courage to do those hard things. And when you do that, you know, that's when the reward comes because you get those breakthroughs and with those breakthroughs come a higher level of confidence. And, and with that confidence, then you can achieve whatever you desire to achieve. It's all in the mind, all in the mind. <laughs> you know, Yolanda, you said something very good there about it's, it's part of the hustle and part of the grind and you have to want to achieve. Let's start right there. When people mm -hmm. say they'd like to go out and do a thing and they start dreaming of that particular goal that they've set for themselves, do they really realize how much it takes to be involved in developing their brand and working with others to make sure they have a team that helps them succeed? You know, the teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah, that's a great statement. I love that and a good question. You know, the reality is I think a lot of times we don't. And and when we live in such an instantaneous world where we want just instant gratification, instant results, we don't realize the level of effort it takes. And I tell people all the time, it's action plus consistency that equals results. And I think one of the most common 
uh, myths around personal branding is the fact that people think it doesn't pertain to them, right? They look at this as something that has been reserved for athletes, Hollywood stars, politicians. And I think uh, you know, what happened to us in 2020 with the pandemic really showed us that if we're in a digital environment and, and we're going to always be in a hybrid environment, we have got to figure out how to elevate ourselves, how to be known for our expertise and our superpowers and how to be discoverable and visible in this world. And so now more than ever, I think people are understanding it. But but truly before that, I was like educating and shouting from the mountaintops, hey, pay attention to your own personal brand. You are the brand, you know, mm-hmm. and, and and be the CEO of that brand called you. But yeah, it's it's been a challenge, but I think I think it's catching on now. <laughs> You know, you, we, we talk about branding here uh, for 2024 and uh, what's a what's a, a definition of branding, if you will, as it relates to uh, developing one's personal brand? We realize that there's there, as you said, athletes or there are politicians and uh, the individual, though, what what's the definition for a brand? I would say that your personal brand is literally the means by which people have a relationship with you and what you represent to them, right? Your personal brand is your ability to really be able to articulate your value, live authentically so that you can make the genuine connections because connection is the new currency, and then really be able to stand out because it's a very competitive environment. It's how you're memorable to people. It's what you represent, that promise that you you deliver. You know, your personal brand is really not so much about you. It's about the value you deliver to others. And I think Jeff Bezos really said it best. He said, your personal brand is what people say about you when you leave the room. So when you leave the room and they're gossiping, because they will, is it positive or is it negative? So it's really that stamp, that footprint that you leave in the minds of other people. You know, that's, that's, that's really well put how you said that based on what Jeff Bezos uh, said. Is it also a, an understanding of getting to know yourself and to thy own self be true, realizing that your brand, uh, yeah, people may gossip about it, but you've got to be sure about who you are so that you're not confused, dazed, and bewildered by people who may go negative on your brand. So powerful. You know, I, I, I remember the first time we met, you happened to be hearing me speak and hearing my story. And, and uh, it was a story of me, you know, having some trials throughout my career and how it only takes one person to really run the narrative about you. So if you're not telling your story, somebody else is, and that can be powerful. And it requires a great depth of of just what you said. When you think about the brand discovery process, that's going inside and saying, who am I? Who is that authentic me? That's where that authenticity comes out and really understanding that. And once you know your value and once you're confident in who you are, then when you are faced with those situations where someone challenges you, challenges your brand, challenges your credibility or integrity, you're able to withstand those hits. You know, it doesn't mean it doesn't hurt any less, but the fact is, is you're willing to withstand it because you know beyond a shadow of a doubt who you are and what you represent to the world. Yeah, and Yolanda, we have a lot to unpack with that because your personal story uh, has has catapulted you into becoming this branthropist and this person who lives a purpose-driven life and helping people understand the dimensions of achieving purpose-driven success. That is not done mm-hmm. in a vacuum. You've had to experience it. You've had to taste it. So you, you turn failure into success. And before we, we get to that moment, talk to me about purpose-driven living and how it equates to purpose-driven success. Yeah, I think one of the best things an individual can do if they have the, 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 the opportunity in this lifetime is to really understand why they're here. You know, what is that purpose that you've been put on this earth for? And, and it's different for everyone. And the beauty is, is that you get the opportunity to define it. But one of the things I say is that so often we live based on someone else's opinion of us or how they subscribe and, and, and suggest that we should live versus living 
with our own passion and our own purpose at the forefront of what we do. Because if you don't have a certain house, if you don't drive a certain car, if you don't have certain statuses, then you're not successful. And that's just not true. I think people need to understand that we don't chase money. Don't chase money. Chase your purpose. If you chase your purpose, these things will, will come. And when you're doing that, I think what happens is there becomes just a part of you that becomes unshakable, right? And when you know what that is, you can you can navigate around what I call some of the uh, intricacies of, of, of our life, right? That, that throw the obstacles and the barriers in our way. You'll figure out ways to navigate and stay on your path because it's a lot of things that come into our life today to distract us and take us off of that. I mean, you know, I'm a, I'm a spiritual person. I believe in God and I believe when God is, is really doing remarkable things in your life and really breaking through and allowing you to flourish, then there's also that other side of the evil that is there to attack and distract. So it's important that we know what that purpose is. We know what our passion is and that we stay the course because it's easy to become overwhelmed in the minutia of the everyday world. Wow. So true. So true. Uh, hey, America, I hope you're paying attention to what this incredible woman of faith is talking about. <laughs> uh, Yolanda Smith, she founded Branding for Success LLC, purpose driven for your life to become purpose driven as well and to become successful. On the other side of the break, we're gonna to talk to you about Yolanda and what she had to go through to become the brand of success and hope and love and faith that she exudes today. More of Yolanda Smith in just a moment. Welcome back to America's Hope. I'm Kelly Wright. I'm talking to Yolanda Smith. Yolanda M. Smith embodies purpose-driven success with a mission to empower others to achieve their optimal best. Do you notice I said she's helping others? Isn't that so refreshing, America, that we achieve what we need to do in life and then we pass it on? I like to say share love, freedom, and peace. And Yolanda, you do that in such a, a phenomenal way uh, through your brand you. uh, and through your brand, your personal branding expertise, I should say, in helping people through your company branding for success. But look, in order to do that, that means you had to go through things yourself. What's the personal story and narrative of Yolanda Smith? Whew, let's see. I mean, you know, there's been several. I mean, I've lived a life that has had a lot of twists and turns, but I think one that fundamentally uh, changed the way I looked at things and made me really re result and in wanting to help other people. First, uh, I must back up a little bit and say that I was actually mid-career before I ever had a sponsor, a coach, or a mentor. As a matter of fact, I didn't even know I needed one. Nobody ever told me. And so one of the things I can share with you is that when you don't know what you don't know, but somebody else does, that can be risky. And that's where the problem can come in. But in my particular situation, I was working in, in a corporate environment and my career by all counts was on an upward trajectory. I was really going up, up, doing a lot of things and making uh, uh, a lot of things happen within this organization. The organization went through a restructure and in the blink of an eye, every coach, sponsor, leader I had walked out the door because they offered a very lucrative early retirement. And one of the things I know immediately is I felt like I was alone. And I, they lifted my team up, shifted us to a new area, and I didn't know anybody. And I didn't really try initially to get to know anybody because I was really focused on my team and sort of their health and wellness and, and just adapting to the change. But within a short period of time, in walked a boss who was not very uh, pro Yolanda, let's just put it that way. And uh, ultimately did not really like the things that I were doing, did not like all the attention that was being put on me, the accolades that I was getting. And really, for whatever reason, I don't know, because she didn't know me, set out to really destroy my career. And ultimately, I just sat back and let her go for it. 
not knowing what, what this would mean. And then I remember getting that call from HR saying, we need to talk to you. And I was really excited because I'm thinking, okay, finally, this is going to be over because I knew I hadn't done anything and literally go into the office only to find out that I got demoted and they took my team away from me. And wow. you talk about devastation. Yeah. Wow. Um, and it was really just in that moment of having to really realize, you know, your life can change in an instant. You and know, I allowed her to run the narrative. Yeah, I didn't mean to interrupt, or interrupt, but when when your life changes in a moment like that, it's very hard to have your life disrupted by the negative things that go on and you become distracted and blinded by that moment of negativity. What was your breakthrough out of that to say, Yolanda, come on, girl, you're better than this. You can do better than this. Uh, what what was your breakthrough? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, let's not let's not let's not get people to, you know, the wrong idea that hurt. You know what I mean? Yeah. That was that was a tough one. That was a blow. And the breakthrough for me was just recognizing that I had two questions to ponder. One was I going to take any accountability. Uh, and this was through a lot of prayer, a lot of counsel, you know, those sorts of things. But was I going to take any re accountability? And then number two, was I going to give one individual the power to control my destiny? And to number one, I said, yes, I had to take some accountability. I'd already been teaching personal branding for years, but didn't do the very thing I taught other people to do. And that was tell your story, get connected with people, make sure they know from your perspective who you are. Don't allow somebody else to run that narrative. And I didn't do that. And then to number question number two, I, I said, I vowed, no way am I going to give this person that much power over me. So I'm going to forgive her because I know that is the right thing to do but I'm going to have to pick myself up by the bootstraps, humble myself because you had to put the ego on the side. I lost a big title in the process of this and march myself back into those doors and prove to everybody who I am and the brand that I am. And that's exactly what I set out to do. Yeah. My goodness. And the results are crystal clear. You've become a international speaker and a coach empowering mm -hmm. entrepreneurs and professionals yes. uh, throughout all of corporations throughout the world, developing a, a compelling yes. personal brand for them to have influence and impact. And the reason why I like that is that you went through it and now you've lived through it. And now beyond that, you're helping people achieve their goals and their dreams. That's, that's outstanding. And, and when, you, when you're you. giving to people, uh, talk to me about what you feel when you see a person uh, get that gleam in their eyes and that connectivity to what you're saying to say, oh my goodness, I can do this. Yolanda has been with me all along. Thank you. Yes. You know, the greatest satisfaction, everybody, we need money to survive. Let's keep it real. We need money to survive. But I, I can honestly sit here and tell you my greatest satisfaction comes when I see people have those breakthrough aha moments when, you know, they're listening to me and I'm giving them the systems and the formulas and the processes to work through to get to that other side, to really be able to elevate themselves for the visibility and recognition that they deserve, you know, and to see them go through that process and then have have those breakthroughs, those successful moments where they realize this really works, you know, and, and it's like, I don't teach anything. I don't share and coach on anything that I have not been through. I know that we have people that they can go and get certifications and they learn it in the books. But what you get here is true life experience. And I, my techniques are proven because I've been through them. Clients of mine have been through it. And my vision literally is to help 100,000 women to really be able to amplify their voice, unleash the power of their brand so that they can have joy and success in this lifetime. If I could give that as a gift to somebody, I've done my job. Wow, that's, that's uh, it, look, look, we've just finished celebrating Christmas, so now I feel that you're the Christmas present that keeps on giving. <laughs> The gift you, that keeps on giving, right? The gift that keeps on giving. And, and, and to be clear, it. in 2023, you were recognized by the Coach Foundation uh, as well as uh, gaining distinction as Forbes, uh, I hope I have this right, Forbes, uh, black member at a 2023 ESPY Award recipient, recipient for Outstanding Speaker Excellence. I mean, you're, you're yes. just doing some great things, but what I like about yes. it is that you're not hoarding it. You're giving it away, saying people... Yes come learn uh, from my experience. 
Isn't that what we all have to learn how to do to be our brothers and sisters keeper and not our brothers and sisters killer? You know, if, if I can give people the, the small gift of recognizing that we can't go it alone. You know, I've had remarkable success throughout my career, with, even with the valleys, right? I've had remarkable success throughout my career. But I tell people all the time, you know, as I continue to soar and I plan to keep going, I mean, I'm in a different lane now and I'm an entrepreneur. I left corporate America after 30 something years in leadership, you know, senior leadership at a pharmaceutical company. As I continue to soar, I don't want to go by myself. I don't want to go it alone. I want to see people come along. And I think one of the greatest things and, and things on my heart right now is how do we create that generational wealth? How do we really impact our community? This is so big. It's so much missing there. And if I can just be a small part of that and just really instill through education, empowerment, engagement with people, how to do those things, because generational wealth is not just about the money. How do we pass that knowledge down so that our kids, our grandkids, our grandkids, grandkids can know that there's hope that if they just do certain mm -hmm. things and they stick with it and they're committed and they're in in action and they live an integrous life that things positively can happen for them. Yolanda, thank you. I, I admire you and I know that in 2022 you were uh, seen as being one of the most admired women leaders in business in America and certainly you've yeah. uh, contributed greatly to this country as well as to the world. Yes. Uh, final question before I let you go and, and I must add that uh, please come back anytime to talk to us about achieving one's brand. But before I let you go, what is your hope for America? Whew. Wow. You know, if I had to sum it up in one word, I would just say peace. Just that we could just all live in peace and harmony and just love. That's love great. conquers all. The Bible says that love, love conquers all. And just the hatred that we're experiencing right now and the discord, the, the racism, just it, why, why? Just tell me why. What is one person doing to another person that is so bad just because they look different that creates such such discord and distension? And, and, and I, it, I just, for the life of me, I just don't understand. It just, it, it, that hurts my heart. It just does. Why? Yeah, why? And I think you said it well, love conquers all, and love recovers a multitude of sins. And earlier you were talking about how yes. the person who hurts you the most in corporate America, you have the power of love to turn around and forgive and move on. Forgive. And you know what good, yeah. what's good about that is that once you forgive, you ain't looking over your shoulder no more. <laughs> You're moving straight ahead. <laughs> I'm not giving you any more energy. How about there that? I don't give energy to anything I cannot control. Yolanda, thank you for bringing us some hope. Uh, you are also the successful author of two bestsellers, Reputation to Reward, uh, notably securing a top uh, 10 finalist spot at the 2020 Author Elite Awards. I I'm just so proud of you and so honored to have you on yes. America's Hope. Looking forward to you coming back. Thank you so much for having God bless you. Yes, Yolanda I look Smith, forward everybody. to it. Thank you. And where can we find out information about Yolanda Smith? Which Definitely the website, YolandaMSmith.com. And then I'm also on Instagram at branding, the number for success, branding for success, LinkedIn, branding for success. Uh, or you can put in Yolanda M. Smith. Um, I'm easy to find. I make sure I'm discoverable. And you've given us our slogan for the year, soar in 24. Yolanda Smith on America's Hope. I'd like to thank our guests who appeared on tonight's program. And my final word tonight is based on what we heard from Yolanda M. Smith, the Branthropist helping you improve your personal brand. In other words, my friends, don't ever give up on hope or believing in God and in yourself. You have the ability to achieve anything that you conceive as long as you continue to believe. Believe that you can work through it. Believe that you have the tenacity and the sagacity to earn it. And then once you do, thank God that you got it and keep spreading love, freedom, and peace and hope. Until next time, America, good night. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your friendly conductor. All aboard the love train. Uh. Love 
is easy to find if you're listening The color of light isn't red, black or white But it's crimson We all bleed the same If you don't feel the groove It's alright Just give it time, give it time Come on y'all survive if our hearts beat inside a hateful rhythm you see love isn't bought but comes with a price of forgiveness and we all bleed the same yeah. if you don't feel it now just wait it's coming y'all a long train Give it time, give it time Get on board Your America and my America